Yeah, apparently that's a thing. Benvenidos, worldwide fans of the planet. Hottest entertainment with an edge. I'm Jaime in Fuego, and I cordially welcome you to my namesake program in Fuego Tainment. That's right, y'all. You can just call me Fuego for short, and I am so stoked to have you here as I give my thoughts on the latest live action Disney film. That's right. So, taking one of their previous properties, turning it into an affair that has real people, or in some cases, real digitized animals. We get a little bit of both here in this the 2019 reimagining by Tim Burton and Erin Kruger of. Dumbo, that's right. And so Dumbo is not like an absolute all-time favorite for me. Those would be, you know, things like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and Alice in Wonderland. And I guess as far as later stuff goes, I enjoy, you know, the, oh, I guess the Little Mermaid and I enjoy Beauty and the Beast. But I'm honestly really a sucker for older, like much older Disney stuff and Dumbo being one of those, you know? And uh, so it's one that hits you in the feels. It's one that is kind of psychedelic at times, if anybody remembers the whole Dumbo getting drunk scene and the pink elephants and all that wackiness. It's also a wee bit uh, stereotypical and some would say borderline the uh, whole, well, the, what, who am I beating around the bush about? A little racist. Yeah, that's right. We're talking singing crows and stuff. but. So, uh, this is the latest live action adaptation, but it's uh, one of, I believe it's going to be three this year, if I'm not mistaken, because we still have Guy Ritchie's uh, interpretation of Aladdin coming, and then we still have John Favre's dealing with all animals once again. Well, actually, I guess there was one human in the Jungle Book, but in his upcoming version of The Lion King, there is not going to be any. So, uh, yeah. Dumbo, and it's got a lot of very noteworthy human actors in it. It's got some Colin Farrell, it's got some Michael Keaton, it's got some Danny DeVito, it's got some Eva Green. Who, Lord have mercy. And so, uh, yeah, I guess uh, always here on Infuegotainment, we cover Bueno, we cover Malo, we cover Feo, and so I'm going to start as best I can with the Bueno because I definitely had some mixed feelings about this film. So, uh, it's definitely not a masterpiece by by any way, shape, or form, but it is a it is a visual delight, in all honesty. Although, uh, some of the malo, some of the bad is the fact that it does look a little, um, a little green screeny, a little too CGI at times, but for the most part, Tim Burton brings his visual magic to the screen that I had kind of abandoned all faith in, you know, at least as far as his last few pictures until I saw Miss Peregrine School for Gifted Goth Kids, and when I saw that movie, I was like, okay, Burton still has it in him to a degree to make stuff that's a little twisted looking and yet very visually striking and I feel like he has the ability to tell a good story when there is a solid script. Solid script this film does not have, but I will get to that in the model. Um, but as far as the, a, a visual treat goes, like the actual like circus acts and everything and uh, you know just some of the little twists that are taken on the visualization and also the animals do look, the, the, the elephants at least, look quite good. Now there's a few times where you're just like, okay, Dumbo is very obviously CGI, but for the most part, um, the visuals of these fake animals are really realistic looking, like genuinely. And uh, I mean, it, I, Dumbo is very cute and he evokes a lot of just personality and just heart warmth and stuff and kind of hits you in the feels a lot, especially with those big old eyes of his. And uh, a lot of the flying scenes do actually look pretty convincing and really good. And so, you know, you couple that with some of the costume design, which is really great. And uh, once Eva Green finally shows up along with Michael Keaton, and they're taken to this like dreamland big theme park of sorts that they have back east. It's a, it all is very just eloquently and meticulously crafted. This is a great looking film for the most part, except for certain times where you're just like, okay, yeah, they're walking around on green screen. Because I believe at the end of the day, because there were certain scenes where I'm like, oh God, it's gonna be all green screen. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that does look like a practical, like traveling circus set. So I'm, I'm assuming they did a combination of both. And there's only a few instances where it really sticks out like a sore thumb and doesn't look as good. So the, the visuals, the costume design, the set design for the most part. And, and really, um, 
I, I like Danny DeVito's character a lot. I really did in this. He provided the, the predominance of the laughs in this. Uh, he really genuinely did, and he's got, he's got kind of that heart of gold despite his little essence of scoundrelishness, and uh, you know, Eva Green's pretty good, uh, Michael Keaton is a little more on the stereotypical side, I can't say that his performance is bueno, and really, um, Colin Farrell and the kids are pretty meh as well, but you know, DeVito is good, and I feel like the few instances that we get, you know, like with the fat lady, with the snake charmer and stuff, I felt like they all brought an interesting essence of personality and the strong man as well. So the, the little ensemble supporting circus cast is pretty on point and, uh, you know, they seem, they seem genuine and good as well. So, um, I mean, that's really, that's really what this film has going for it. Just the heart that you get from Dumbo and his connection with the kids is cute, but it doesn't really sell itself as well as I would have liked, and that's where I have to segue into the model, into the bad of this film. Kruger did not write a very good script here. He really didn't. And it essentially turns into a pseudo sequel of sorts in the fact that, you know, we see a lot of the same beats, you know, with, uh, you know, Dumbo's mom taken away and everything. And I, I guess I will give them credit for how we find out what Dumbo's name is going to be. You know, his mom's name is Jumbo and he's like, you know, baby Jumbo, whatever. And there's an accident that happens at like his, one of his early acts. And uh, I actually think it's his debut act now that I think about it. And, you know, a letter falls down, you know, it's like dear Jumbo, dear baby Jumbo. And so a D falls down. And so it looks like, you know, ear, baby, Dumbo, and a J falls off. And so it's all, you know, it's, it, that's one of the few clever nods, but clever this script is not. And it's also like, it's a little more harsh at times than I thought it was going to be. You know, the original is a tearjerker for many as it is for me, at least to, at least to certain degrees. But I'm going to save uh, one element in particular for, for the ugly and, uh, but, but yeah, the script is just a, a, a lot of the human beats don't really come off as as really hitting emotionally and having that heft and punch, I think, the way that they were trying to. Although there is one scene with the ukulele and the fat lady singing, and that's why I gave credit in the bueno to, uh, because the animals don't talk in this. So it's not like the Jungle Book or the upcoming Lion King. They are actually animal animals. And so, uh, and, and the model was also the fact that, yeah, Dumbo does a whole lot of stuff where just, his ability to understand the people. Now I know it's a it's a work of fantasy. It's make believe. You know, a flying elephant, for God's sake. You know, it's about as likely as monkeys flying out of my butt or something. But uh, and it's he's once again it's a work of fiction. And perhaps I'm just a little cynical in my uh, you know in my just growing years or whatever you want to classify it as. But yeah, he's just way too intuitive for my taste. And uh, you know. His interactions with the kids, I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't really like the kids very much in this movie, <laughs> honestly. Especially the, the snooty, uh, you know, older sister, you know, the, the, you know, the student of science and all that. Not that, you know, science be praise. I don't know. So, uh, she just, uh, her and the younger brother just didn't really do it for me. And neither did, neither did Colin Farrell and the very, very deliberate pulling on the heartstrings, you know, he, t it's, it's in the first five minutes of the movie, okay, he comes back from World War One, and his arm has been uh, lost in the war, and so it, it's just like, the whole very, it's very deliberate, and very just, I don't know, heavy-handed in what they're trying to make you feel a lot of the time, however, you do genuinely feel it for Dumbo and his mom, like the, the animals and the supporting cast, in my opinion, give off the, the predominance of the emotion, but yeah, the script just, it, it's cliche beat after cliche beat, and um, yeah, it doesn't really bring a lot of new depth or interest or just fresh ideas to the table, in all honesty, it just doesn't, doesn't succeed in that department, unfortunately. So, uh, as opposed to, you know, flogging this like uh, Dumbo's mom uh, gets at one particular time, let's just jump right to the ugly and get the ugly out of the way in the fact that, um, when Dumbo is being mistreated during the, uh, the, it's from the movie, you know, where he's dressed up and goes up with the clowns and the firemen and everything like that. Uh, when his mom, like, does the whole rage riot thing and, you know, becomes the mad elephant and goes into, uh, and this is a spoiler, everybody, okay? So if you don't want a spoiler, you know, speak now or, you know, bounce out now or forever hold your peace. But when, when Dumbo's mom goes into, when Jumbo goes into rage and just knocks the whole tent down and everything happens, she kills somebody. Somebody dies. And in all honesty, I didn't really feel 
as much sympathy maybe as I was supposed to, and the kids just brush it off. They're like, we know your mom didn't mean to do it, and blah, 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 but a person died! An innocent person died from this animal raging, and now that's not where I'm saying, like, you know, go put the elephant down, like they tried to do at one particular point in this movie, when Michael Keaton being the very, and this is ugly too, Michael Keaton is the most stereotypical, he <laughs> he I'm so scheming and mischievous bad guy, and what he does at the end of the movie, after he realizes they're trying to break Dumbo's mom out, and, uh, you know, Dumbo flies away and he's losing his prized attraction and everything, and he goes up to where all the power for his ginormous park is run, and he's just like, hey man, just breaking every lever, and he causes this big electrical fire and his whole park is burning down. It's like the stupidest, like, ah, it's, it's ugly, it's fail, it's just dumb, it's really dumb, and, um, yeah, I guess that's really one of the biggest problems that I had. It's it's even beyond that. It's ugly how how lame and just like not hitting the mark this script is. And so I that's why at the end of the day, if if I had to go either two stars or three stars, I think I would really really struggle to say that this was a bueno movie. But I guess I will say that. I'm gonna give it three by the skin of its teeth. Like literally, I'm gonna say this movie is bueno, but it is not, it's good, but definitely not great. At the end of the day, like I was walking out of the theater with Cecil, my co-host on the horror show from this early press screening and stuff. And I was just like, it was fine. You know, it was fine. I, I feel like the stupid stuff that happens in the third act was overshadowed, thankfully, by the fact that um, I like DeVito's performance enough um, I liked the CGI enough, I liked the look of the film enough, and I liked a few of the story beats enough to to give it a, to, I'll give this one a pass, okay? I was really torn between two and three, so this gets three Fuego Fireballs. It's bueno, it's good, but it's definitely, it's not on par or anywhere near, you know, the quality of Cinderella or... You know, honestly, I still think Cinderella is the best of all the live-action adaptations. Better than Beauty and the Beast, better than The Jungle Book. I thought both, I thought both The Jungle Book and uh, Beauty and the Beast were just okay. I really didn't like Maleficent. Maleficent is definitely worse than this movie. But, um, I don't know. So, yeah, it gets three out of five, and that is the final verdict before I start to overanalyze this. And, by the way, did I mention how much I love Eva Green, except for in Ding the Kill 4? Bitch. But in any event, I've been Jaime Fuego. You can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the YouTubes where you're watching me right now. I am doing ongoing Star Wars coverage here the entire year of 19. Yes, the year of 19 has different significance for a show called Hail the Stephen King that I host on the horror show. But yes, I'm covering all of the different Star Wars films. So far, I have done episodes one and two, and I just released my coverage of the Samurai Jack Clone Wars cartoon and the Clone Wars movie the David Filoni theatrical released film. Next month I'm going to be doing Revenge of the Sith, then I'm going to be segueing into the spin-off films like Rogue One and Solo because I'm reviewing all of these in timeline order, not in release order. Also here on Enfuego Tame and I do the occasional trailer reaction, uh, usually at least one new review a week, and then I also did a big chunk of Oscar coverage earlier this year where I did all eight of the Best Picture nomination. So if you want scarific coverage where I spend most of my time on YouTube, I am at youtube.com slash the horror show channel, just like you see spelled below. Trailer reactions there as well. Lots of scarific film, comic, and television reviews. Uh, convention coverage, video game let's plays from some of the rest of the crew over there. So yes, pretty much everything under the horror umbrella. So I guess uh, that means it is time for us to pack things up and for me to say adios. So until the real of Ka comes around once more, I shall say hasta luego, sin amigos, and uh, I'm a constant viewers here on, uh, yes, in Fuego Tainment. You are greatly appreciated. Say thank you, and I hope that we get to reconnect with one another sooner rather than later. Peace.